Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackYear.com, and today we're going to break down the Shark Squall 2 full face helmet. The Shark Squall 2 sells from $259 to $299. Depends on if you want a solid color or a graphic. Please understand, we don't update videos for pricing changes, only if the helmet itself has been completely redesigned. Before I let any more words come out of my mouth, check that shit out. Some of the helmets, and we call this out on the website, come with the white LEDs we're showing you here. And imagine what that's going to look like, dude, when it's dark outside, okay? Also have a blinking feature. Second push. Blinking. Five hours continuous when they're left on all the time. Ten hours when they're in the blink state. That's at a full charge. The battery that comes with it is set for 5,000 charge cycles. The battery itself is allegedly replaceable. Okay? That's freaking cool. Turn the lights down. That is going to take visibility, you know, certainly, and enhance it, enhance safety. The blinking feature definitely has the opportunity to catch somebody's eye, whether it's in the daytime or at night. Who is this helmet right for? This is meant to be a street helmet only, okay? I really wouldn't use something like this on the racetrack. It is DOT only certified. That said, it carries a four out of five star sharp helmet rating. That's a UK thing. I don't know how much stock you do or don't put in that, but go ahead and Google sharp helmet ratings. You can take a look at that. Not sure why this isn't coming over with an ECE tag on it. I'm pretty sure in Europe it's going to be ECE certified, but for the US they chose not to do that. Weight. We are at 3.65 pounds in a size medium on our digital shipping scale. Let's dive right into sizing. Now I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. Per the shark size chart, I would be in a medium. I wore this medium at my desk for an extended period of time. And I got to tell you, I got a great fit from this helmet. I would say it runs true to size. Head shape of the helmet is overwhelmingly intermediate oval with a very slight round oval tendency. And where that can be really nice for a street rider, it just picks up a little more room, a little more space in the ear area. I'm just mentioning that I don't want you to target fixate on that one because it was very, very slight. Glasses compatibility. If you wear prescription eyewear, let me tell you, Shark has built compatibility in for that. I would say glasses compatibility is excellent with this helmet. Let's dive into features and benefits. Okay, here is the switch for the LEDs right here. There's your little charging port. You know, if you want to hide that, you know, you can kind of slide that, you know, under the liner here, move it around. You don't even feel that when that's in there. It comes with a little USB cable to charge it. Your switch is right here. One push, LEDs are on, continual. Second push, they are flashing. Push again, they turn right off. It's on the left side, it's really easy to reach. That is probably the standout, right on the surface, standout feature of this helmet. Drop down inner shield. Right here on the left edge of the visor is where the actuator is. It has a nice smooth action. It feels like it has detents both top and bottom. I really like that quite a bit. Ventilation. Any helmet that offers a drop down inner screen, you know, right from Jump Street, you know, you lose the ability to put any vents right here in the, the brow of the helmet, which is a great place to introduce air into a helmet. So with a drop down inner screen, you're always sacrificing, say, just a little bit of ventilation but you pick up all that convenience in being able to go from a clear shield to a tinted screen with literally the flip of a lever. Large intake vent up here in the crown of the helmet. There'll be channeling in the EPS that we're gonna show you to help support airflow. More intake is gonna be up here in the chin area. This is going to introduce air to demish the shield and have fresh air up in the mouth area for the rider. Exhaust ventilation is managed through the back portion of the helmet, through that diffuser. Aerodynamics. That is where Shark really stands out from the competition. The tuning that they're able to do 
aerodynamically from these helmets and the engineers they have working on that stuff really separates them. A good example of that and a helmet I've ridden in quite a bit and really enjoy is their Shark Race R Pro. It's their top of their range full race helmet. It is the quietest, most stable in the wind full face race helmet I have. With that said, we're not talking crushing all the competition, but when you're comparing it to the best of the best, it wins out on that battle. They move that same engineering and technology into helmets that are much more affordable and designed for the street. And with this 2.0 version of the Squall, okay, they have changed the aerodynamics of this helmet to improve its quietness, right, and ventilation and stability. Part of that is going to be found in this shield. Comes with a clear pinlock ready shield. It includes the pin lock insert, so it's a complete package. No need to buy another shield, no need to buy a pin lock lens, everything is included. This shield is optically correct, it offers very strong detents and a nice gasket on the back side to seal. And you'll also note that the shape of the shield itself is done in such a way to complement the aerodynamic package the helmet itself offers instead of hinder it. Like even the switch up here in the front, look at the edges, how they're machined on that, okay? So just that little thumb point right there, right? They machine it so that it cuts through the wind easier. Removal and reinstallation of the shield is about as toolless and easy as you can ever get. Kind of stabilize the helmet and literally just pull forward like so. You'll know when you get the shield off too, there's a fair amount of weight to it. You know, optically correct, variable thickness stuff. A lot of technology from Shark. Reinstallation is every bit as easy as removal. Let's point out this gasket they use here too. That gasket is really robust. Comes with a breath deflector. You can see the channeling here that lines up with the intake vent in the chin area for demisting and introducing air into that portion of the helmet. To reinstall the shield, simply slide this in over the post that's on the back side of this and push backwards. That is as easy as it gets. Before you take it for a ride, always cycle it a couple times to make sure that you're good to go. I'm going to pull the shield back off before we dive into the interior portion of this helmet. The shell is thermoplastic resin shell, right? So that means injection molded plastic. They're using one shell size throughout all the different sizes, extra small up to 2X. High-end fabrics are used all new spoiler here in the back area. This is to complement the aerodynamic performance of this helmet. It is shark communication. They're, they have a proprietary Bluetooth device. It is ready to accept that. If you don't want to use that, this will also give you the ability to install most of the universal units that are available commercially today as well. If you're going to do it, the Shark one is pretty affordable, right, and it's probably going to be the best choice because it integrates directly with this helmet. Some reflectives here to complement the LEDs, like you need reflectives when you have LEDs, right, because those things pop, it's amazing. Reflectives here on the base of the neck roll of the helmet, high-end fabrics are, that are used. This thing feels great when you have it on, it ships complete with a chin curtain pre-installed. To remove the chin curtain, simply grab it here by the edges work your way around and pull. It holds itself in there quite nicely. You have some Velcro on the edges to ensure that it stays put. You can ride with that installed or remove it if that is your preference. To remove the cheek pads, you need to get your fingers in between the EPS of the helmet in the cheek pad area and the backing plate for the cheek pads. Kind of push in there. We've got a snap up front. We've got some Velcro towards the top. Got another snap here in the back. Once you have all that undone, grab the cheek pad here at the very base in the neck roll area and kind of give it a tug out and rotate forward and pull it like this. Even with the cheek pad, you know, you can see the engineering that has gone into this. You know, comparing it to their $159 to $179 helmet, this is a massive step above so much that I wouldn't even recommend considering that 159 to 179 helmet when you can get this you know, for just a few dollars more, you're getting so much more helmet 
there is not even a comparison. And don't even get me started on those LEDs again. Probably driving Caleb nuts right now because it just looks so badass and it in increases the visibility tremendously. Other cheek pads, simple mirror image. Double D-ring retention system, nice padded straps. There's a look at your charging port. You can kind of see the switch back here and the battery for the LEDs. That all stays put nicely behind the liner. To remove the top pad, grab the fabric here, give a nice little tug, pull it forward, rotate it around. You need to get your kind of thumb behind this plastic tab. I like to support the inner EPS there. You kind of lift up to help release those locks that are in place. This one is definitely in there, like so. If you look at your top pad, nice high-end fabrics, super comfortable. You can see the quality and the engineering in this piece as well. Let's look at the helmet from the inside out. You can learn so much when you take something apart. The ventilation. Here's your intake vent. You can see that's a large hole. We have two exhaust vents here. You have all the channeling in that area, right? So most of your intake and extraction is gonna happen right here in that crown area. There's really not a lot of provisions here in the back for the communication systems. There are recesses for the speakers to be installed. Once again, you know, the Shark Direct Fit is probably gonna give you the nicest overall fit. You can still do your universal stuff if that's going to be your preference. In closing, if you can't tell, I really like this helmet. I think Shark has done a great job here. You're getting a lot of helmet at a very affordable price. Don't get me started on those LEDs again. That is a huge safety thing. When you're out there street riding today, let's face it, man, people are freaking distracted. How many times you go buy somebody on the freeway and you look, they're looking down at their phone. They're not even thinking about looking at the road. Those flashing LEDs can be that shiny object that are the difference between somebody seeing you and not seeing you, right? And all that in a good, solid helmet package. Really dig this quite a bit. I don't know that I'll get a chance to ride in this one, okay? This is kind of outside of the range of the stuff that I usually ride in. With that said, if any of our YouTube followers are out there and you own this helmet and you've ridden in it, please comment on its performance. I know the rest of our viewers would really appreciate that. I would also appreciate that as well, but I gotta tell you, at this price point, you're shopping for these features, this is a helmet I would put on the shortlist. You got any questions, leave those in the comments section of this video, I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm here to make sure you have a great experience with the stuff you buy at STG.